Hello friends, this is Bright here. In the last video, we are discussing about the binary operator overloading for plus. The same thing you can apply for other operators such as minus or multiplication just by replacing by plus. That is, remove the plus and instead of that, you can put the necessary operator. For example, if you want to op overload a subtraction, instead of plus, you have to put minus. Now we are going to see how can we overload relational operators. So what is the meaning of the relational operators overloading? Let us see. Suppose I have two variables A and B. To compare A and B, I can do like this, A either less than or some greater than, then I can say that B. So I, we can do like that. If A is less than B, then we can say that C out, A is smaller. else if a is greater than b then we can say that c out a is greater else we can say that c out a is equal to b and if you want you can again put if a is equal to b but for this a and b must be numerical data for example you should have some numerical data it may be integer floating like that but if a and b are two objects then this operation is not defined this operation is not defined and the, the comparison like this nothing is defined so consider now a and b are object so for this things to be executed smoothly we have to give new meaning for less than operator and here if a and b are again objects we have to give new definition for this operator and here also we have to provide new meaning for this operation so that's about the relational operator overloading we are providing extra meaning extra meaning doesn't ma uh, doesn't mean that we are changing the meaning here even though you are providing that new meaning the old meaning still it's available that is we can compare with the uh, numerical data in the same program itself so we are providing extra information to these operators that is what is called overloading we are overloading that relational operators so let us quickly see with the help of a simple example so here I have a class a which has an attribute data and here I have the constructor uh, to initialize the attribute of data and here I have two objects OB1 and OB2. So now we are going to check whether OB1 is less than OB2 or greater than or if not whether it is equal. So we are going to check like this. If OB1 is less than OB2. So First of all, we have to provide extra meaning for this less than operator. Now, when this expression is evaluated, so it expects some value, either zero or non-zero, that is uh, false or true. Zero means false, uh, non-zero means true value. So we have to provide that 
extra meaning through the operator overloading function. So we are going to overload less than symbol and this function should return either true or false. It means it should return true is returned by specified by a non-zero or it should return a zero value. So what must be the return type? It can be an integer. We can say zero or non-zero can be easily specified by integer and that operator overloading function name must be operator and which operator we are overloading less than for that less than then we can put space also then set of parentheses followed by this one so when this method is invoked that is when this expression is evaluated this method will be invoked as ob1 dot operator less than ob2 so uh, like this it will be invoked so to satisfy this uh, parameter passing we have to receive that parameter here by using some variable ob and the ob2 type is a so ob also should be of type a so we are going to check whether it returns or not so anyhow it should return some value let it be zero right now we are going to check whether it is executed or not we are going to say that uh, less than is overloaded just to verify that whether it works or not then we will continue so run the code and you can see that it is overloaded now I will show you this alone I am just copying it commenting all these things and like this ob1.operator whether this will work or not you can see that it is executing as a normal function call so even though you are writing it as ob1 less than ob2 you can see that the same thing we can explicitly call ob1.operator less than ob2 that is why I told you that this ob2 will be passed as an argument to this ob hope that you understood that so now we have to return 0 or non zero so what we have to do we have to take the value of ob1 and ob2 here so for that if we have to come back ob1 is the invoking object so its data we can directly take it data we can check it that it is less than and ob2's data 10 that is passed as an argument to this ob so through that we can take it ob dot data so if it is less than we can say that it return some non-zero value let it be 1 like this then else we can say that return 0 so if it is less than we are going to say that C out OB1 is less than OB2. End. So if not, that is else if OB1 is greater than OB2, what we have to do? Again, this is equivalent to OB1 dot operator greater than ob2 so to meet this function call 
ob1 dot to meet this function called ob1 dot operator greater than of ob2 we have to provide another operator overloading function overload for greater than so same thing i am just copying and pasting here and say that it is greater and here also you can say that it is greater if it is greater then return 1 else return 0 then we can say that here c out ob1 is greater than ob2 else if we can check ob1 equal to ob2 so for this again this will be invoked it will make a function call like this ob1 dot operator double equal ob2 the same as before so if it is true we can say that c out ob1 equal to ob2 so next we have to overload for equal so again i am just copying this function and pasting over here and here replace that operator by double equal here also double equal now i am going to run this program you can see that ob1 less than ob2 now i am going to give same values for both now you can see that ob1 is equal to ob2 now i am going to give this is higher you can see that ob1 is greater than ob2 so this is how to overload relational operators in c++ thank you for watching this